This is the motto of the show Hour of the Truth. Rome never changes. They used to call us heretics and sent the Inquisition to kill us. Today they call us terrorists and send on their crusades. Times and methods may have changed, the goal still stays the same. Extirpate the remnant of the true word of God by the believing people. Suffering at the hands of Rome Cause they believed in Christ alone They died through Europe, especially Spain For they saw all but Christ is vain He suffered by His death for men To save them from their awful sin Six hundred years of martyred saints that history cannot erase With iron heel and iron hand The Roman popes rule the land Those ignorant of history May be swept into apostasy We won't be loved by Rome, sweet lie with 50 million reasons why Salvation is by faith alone In Christ alone, by grace alone A sovereign God give faith to man Salvation's in the Maker's hand This gospel offends Rome today They offer up Another way, a counterfeit, a compromise Beware the ancient papal lie With such a cloud of witnesses Who by grace died in their Lord Recall their memory to say By the same faith we live today you know, there are some people, I just want to get that rid of my chest. There are some people who, uh, who accuse me of being anti-American. Because I'm a European and I bash the Americans for the founding of their nation and for being the second beast of Revelation 13 and all the bad things coming out of America. Well, that's facts. I can't help that. But why should I have anything against any American person that I do not even know. From my heritage, I am German. And 99% <laughs> of the Germans I speak, I, I speak to and I speak to do not accept me and do not accept the things that I say. Germany is being as bad as the United States of America, if you ask me. I'm not American bashing. No, I am even so dumb as a European to read a book written by an American over the American history. I am, as a European, even teaching Americans their history, which is so important. Because when you do not have history, you do not have a right view on the present time. And you surely cannot make predictions for the future. So, bashing on me, being anti-American, is just stupid. I love America. The country is a wonderful country. The people are, as far as I know, a lot of them, wonderful people. But the Government of the Americans, oh my dear. Like the government of where I live, Belgium, where I come from, Germany, where I live in, Europe. It's damnable. It is out of any biblical substance. It is purely living in the lands of the Antichrist under the laws of the Antichrist. And I don't like that. And that's why I 
protest it. I protest that here in Belgium. I protest that here on YouTube and I do that with anyone that I talk to. These damnable Jesuits, this Antichrist Roman Catholic Church, the Church, the hierarchy, the institutions, not the street man who believes in Catholicism, who has been raised that way, who doesn't know any better, who has never opened his eyes to the real truth, who has not a chance to see that these people I'm talking to, these people I want to wake up, like you, dear listener, I love everyone, as Jesus commanded us to do. Love your neighbor as yourself. I have no problem with that. But I point out the errors in your thinking that you have because you haven't been thinking for yourself but being indoctrinated by Jesuitical studio ratiorum, by learning against learning, by everyone taken out God of their lives. I'm just trying to put God back into your lives. I try to put knowledge back into your life, knowledge and wisdom that you can understand what is going on and that when you say I'm a patriot, that maybe rings a bell and says oh, okay I'm a patriot but what can I do if the people who are in my government are not patriots? All the governments in the world, whether it be in uh, over there in the United States of America, whether it be over here in the European Union, whether it be in China or Russia or Australia or Africa or whatever, the leaders of the countries only pledge allegiance to one kingdom, and that is the kingdom of Antichrist, the fourth kingdom that Daniel foretold to be the last kingdom of this earth. It started off with Babylon, it went over to Medio Persia, that went over to Greece and after that it went to Rome. Rome is divided in twice, in two different times or two different ways to say that. It was the legs of iron that was pagan Rome and it is the food of iron mixed with miry clay and that is what we are living in today. And this figure, this statue envisioned by Daniel will be destroyed by the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by the stone that is not cut out with hands. And I really have to get that rid of my chest right now. You can call me a America basher as long as you want. I've never bashed any American person personally because I do not even know them and I am not to judge anybody that I do not know. But I can, on the authority of the 1611 King James Bible, I can make judgments on the governments of the earth the governments of the United States of America, the government of Belgium where I live in, the government of the European Union, of all these people who are being controlled and led by the Antichrist and all his minions. That is not only the Society of Jesus, that's on the top, okay, but that's also Freemasonry, that's Opus Dei, that's Knights of Columbus, for you guys over there in the United States of America. The, the Knights of Columbus are special, a special part of the Knights of Malta founded only for the United States of America. And please get for once into the study of what the Knights of Malta really are. I have a video uploaded on my channel that I uh, uh, that was a conversation that I did some time ago with Michael Adams when I was still with him on uh, Nothing But The Truth and we did a very good video explaining the power of the sovereign military order of Malta. It's more than two hours long. Please watch it and you will see how that goes into there. So I'm not bashing America as long as I'm not bashing Germany or England or whatever. I'm bashing the governments. I love the people. Really, I do. I love Catholics. 
I don't like their belief system. I don't like the hierarchy they belong to. I don't like that they are brainwashed in that sense that they have no idea that they follow a wrong religion. But therefore I make it my work to explain it to them and try to tell them where so-called Christianity, because when today you speak about Christianity, you always speak about Catholics. You speak about the Roman Catholic Church. How that was hijacked by just taking up um, by just taking up all these pagan symbols uh, from the time. You know, the, the Roman Empire is, is, uh, is or, or the Roman Catholic Church is nothing else than the Roman Empire baptized baptized into Christianity. Just go to Rome. And if you don't go to Rome, just take a picture, take a look at St. Peter's. Take a look at the statue of St. Peter in the Vatican. Do your research. That's Jupiter. So they changed the name because all of a sudden the pagan Rome got Christianized. It has nothing to do with original Christianity. Where did ever the Pope of Rome or the Roman Catholic Church hierarchy ever teach the true gospel of Jesus Christ? Tell me. Write me. Let me know. I guess you can't. So then you maybe have to start to do your own research in that direction. And for the last time, I love people. I don't hate Americans. My best friends are Americans. Walt Stickle over there in Oregon. Tom Fress over there in, I don't know, what's it, Ohio or whatever somewhere he lives. I don't know. I don't care. It's the brother that counts for me, not the place he lives in or what he does or whatever. Those are legitimate persons and those are the people I care for and those, for the, those are the people I do this for. I do this for God, I do this for Jesus, but I also do this for my friends. I want to get this information out. I want to make all of you my friends by getting this information out and by telling you what it's really all about. And whether you become my friend and like me, or you become my enemy, because I have spoken the truth and for that I have become your enemy. Well, it's a shame, but that happens. You know, I will survive. I will survive this. I will survive a lot of things. Until the Lord calls me to him. And being honest, I can't wait. What does this earth has to offer me? Only, the only thing this earth has to offer me is the work that I'm doing here by reading Tapa Saucy's book, Rulers of Evil, by doing my broadcasts on Hour of the Truth, by doing all the stuff that I'm doing. This is all the world has to offer me. And for the rest, I don't care. I want my peace in a kingdom of righteousness without lies, without deception, but with love, with grace, humidity, and I want to be with my Father, and I want to be with my Master, my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for me 2,000 years ago on the cross for redemption of my sins that I cannot help to commit. I believe in Jesus as my Savior and I try to walk as close in His footsteps as I can. So, this has nothing to do with the reading of Rulers of Evil, but I had to inject that here sometimes and really, if you want to, write a comment on that. Agree with me, disagree with me, in the end, I don't care because it takes nothing to go with a crowd, but it takes everything to stand alone. By this, I'm signing off, having done the complete reading of Chapter 12 of Rulers of Evil, useful knowledge about governing bodies, and I will see you soon again maybe, or just after this ranting, not anymore. I don't care. It's your decision. It's for you that I'm doing this. 
I would have read the book on myself also. It's much more difficult to do that on an audio and put it later in a video. It's all work, time consuming. And I'm not doing that for me. I'm doing that for the Lord. That is the way the Lord has called me out to serve him. And that's the way I will serve him until I'm dead, whether you like it or not. So, and by this, very much welcome to our latest broadcast on Hour of the Truth. Today we have Thursday, the 16th of July, 2015. That little recording that you just heard, as you heard, was taped at my last reading of Rulers of Evil, because a week or two ago, Walt told me that there were some people in writing and emails and doing broadcasts and whatever, telling me I am an American basher. Well, I can't help it if you don't like the truth. <laughs> I, uh, I don't have anything against Americans or any other people. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Otherwise, I wouldn't do all this work. Otherwise, I wouldn't try to tell the people what it's really all about. Like today in our show, where we have planned to continue the reading of the book that Walt Stickle put together, the Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy, where we are now in the part of the conspiracy of misdirection, which is under, uh, which is uh, written here in four different points, and we are still at the end at point one towards the Masons. At the end of page forty, we will continue. But first, I want to welcome my brother in Christ over there in Oregon, in America, the United States of America, on that very, very far continent, in the New World, as they called it at that time, because the Old World was only something to flee from, because it was ruled by the Pope, and they wanted something else. They wanted to live their freedom of conscience and their freedom of religion that God and the Bible gave them at the time the Reformation kicked in. So, Walt, welcome to the program. And thanks, uh, York, uh, from the European capital of the European Union, 18 miles away from Brussels, the capital of the European Union. Just shortly, uh, uh, tell a little bit why uh, you think that uh, they, lo they located the capital in Brussels, in Belgium. Yeah. And you want to know but, why? Yes, yes, some of the <laughs> highlights. I have, I have no idea why they did that, but when you look a little bit into the history of the Jesuits, then you know that there were a lot of Jesuit schools and universities at that time. At that time, of course, it wasn't called Belgium, it was called Flanders, uh, which is today partly Netherlands, Holland, and which is today partly Belgium. Belgium was only founded in 1831, so the time before that it was Flanders. And like in uh, Liège and uh, Leuven, the place where I live in, and Bruges, which is called Brugge over here, you have had very significant um, Jesuit schools at that time, and uh, Belgium is uh, really a Catholic country. I mean, uh, as far as I know, at least more than 50% of the people officially are Roman Catholic. Then, of course, you have other, uh, other denominations also, but uh, it's overwhelmingly Roman Catholic. And wherever I go, the only thing I meet are people who have been Roman Catholic, uh, who have had a Roman Catholic upbringing. So, I don't know why exactly they made Brussels the headquarter, but it is uh, kind of an artificial country um, that they founded to prevent that uh, in the future, from that time on, um, other European countries would have the possibility to possess the whole coastline, and um, that's what I read about it, and that's why they founded Belgium. So I, I don't know the real reason why it is that way, but in any way it is uh, a very Jesuitical country, I can tell you that, so maybe that has something to do with it. And I, I don't know their reasons why they make that. I, I even do not know why they put the new, new headquarters in Copenhagen, I don't know. Probably they know that it will sink into it, it, it will sink into the ocean <laughs> in a little time. Uh, with the things I've been told with the United States of America, what's going to happen? And they knew they had to build a new headquarters, and then they built it in Copenhagen. But I don't know the reasons. I don't know the reasons for why it's Brussels. But it is Brussels. I can't help it. And yes. uh, we have 
everything here, but uh, yeah, o only European institutions over here, and the problem, of course, is because it always gets more and more and more, like more and more people are coming, working for that. I mean, you have more than 20,000 lobbyists, uh, at least, working in Brussels, and um, these people have to live somewhere, so Brussels is always expanding, expanding, and because they get very well paid, because they take so much taxes out of us, everything is getting more and more expensive, and Belgium is a quite expensive country and uh, very high taxed also. But, uh, the real reason why they put Brussels in as a headquarters or at the, at the capital city of Europe, I got no idea. I don't know why. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, listen, I wanted to start off this week uh, <coughs> with some of the responses we've had with the book. And here's one uh, from uh, Denmark. This is Dear Walt, I have been listening to you in York from Jogger 66, <clears throat> a journey into the New Age philosophy and many others of your program. I would love to get the two books and you are talking about it, and if it's possible for you to send them, I pray that you will let me pr pay for them. I'm Danish and I live in Denmark. <clears throat> And I know it's expensive to mail them. Well, anyway, I've sent her the book. I've sent her the book and uh, got a nice response back that she got the book. She's a mother of five children, and uh, and uh, and it was a real blessing to be able to send it. And then this morning, I, I had a call at 7:30 in the morning <clears throat> from Brunswick, uh, Canada, and uh, and a brother up in. Canada wanted to know how to, uh, he was having trouble printing it. And said, so I see, I have it in book form. If you have a laser printer, you can print that book. And, uh, of course, you have to put binding on it. And if you have any questions on how to put a binding on a book, you can contact me by email, and I'll be more than, happy, more than glad to help you uh, uh, show you how to put a binder on it and a cover on it. And look at this like it's a book that came right out of a bookstore. Um, <clears throat> and then I also got a email. I got uh, uh, a response from a Canadian that lives up in Edmonton. And I sent him two books. And he uh, sent back a little bit of change. Uh, and so I'm going to use that change to to uh, send, send some more books. So I, I, I thank the, the brother in Edmonton. Uh, it was appreciated, you know. And, uh, but uh, <clears throat> and one thing I, I wanted to do, we mentioned this, uh, you and I did at York. I, there's, a, there's a big error in, uh, in the book that I published. Uh, and we, we did, this, we did the, the chapter one week on the Christians and Babylonian politics, America's founding fathers blasphemed Jesus Christ. And, and it ends like this on the paragraph. I, I, this is a real important. To anybody that's got this book, you know, you've you got to correct it. If you have to put an insert in it yourself, because this is a, this is a, a, a you know, and it, and it finishes the book. And I had a brother bring this to my attention. Now, I'm going to read the last paragraph. He says, I encourage you to release yourself from the world's political system. Take comfort in the safety of Christ. Man is not going to build another way into heaven. This is what the Babylonians tried to do as they erected their towers into the heavens, saying, let us make a name for ourselves. The Babylonians of today who control politics are trying to do the same thing. This is not the way, brethren. Now, here's the mistake. And I'm going to pause and let you, everybody figure it out what it is. The kingdom, he says, the kingdom of God is within you, and it is everlasting. Well, I had a friend bring that to me, and, I, and, and so I corrected that. And the corrections for that book, the, 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 the corrections for this book now is the last sentence. You, you, you strike the last sentence, and you put in... John 18:36. This is how the book should end. My kingdom. This is this is Jesus. This is John 18:36. 
Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should be delivered to the Jews. But now is my but now is my kingdom not from hence, not from here. So make sure that you if you're sharing this book and it's a you know, I'm a one horse operation and and I should, that's a that's a real bad error. So anyway, but it's uh, any man can make a mistake, but it takes a man to admit he made one. So, and uh, so that's uh, all I've got for this week on, on, on the responses. York, if you wanted to start on yeah. this week's reading. Yeah, well, you know, errors only become mistakes if you refuse to uh, repair them. Something yes. JFK once said. Yes. So yes. we spotted a mistake. You repaired it. That's all right. You are not infallible like the Pope claims to be, and um, that's why mistakes like this can happen, and it is rectified, so it's okay. Yeah, when we want to go back into the book, um, then I have to start reading on the uh, end of page 40, uh, the last sentence, <coughs> to bring us a little bit back, because we were two paragraphs further, but for continuous sake, it's interesting to back this two paragraphs a little up, and I would start reading, and whenever you feel like you want to make a comment, then please interrupt me, Walt. Okay. The main lesson that Hammer's book teaches is that it is easier to bring down the President of the United States than a crook in the Vatican. When the investigation ended, Aaron Walt, who was testifying before a Senate subcommittee in Washington, said, quote, Because of serious allegations that had been made with respect to someone in the Vatican, although the name of the individual was never given, the Department of Justice made contact with the Vatican and obtained their cooperation. As a result of our visit, and the result of the cooperation of the Vatican, we are able to conclude that there was no substance to the allegation that anyone within the Vatican was culpably involved in this scheme. End quote. Well, that's a big joke, right? The Vatican is always the goal of the conspiracies and never the originator of the conspiracies, as we read before already. Yeah, yeah. In other words, there was a complete whitewash of the whole investigation. So while the real criminals go free, lesser men are prosecuted and sent to jail. Michel Sindona was one of the ones who went to jail. So although a financial visit, in some ways he proved to be quite vulnerable in the end, <coughs> while Vatican men roll on without betting an eye, cleared of all culpability. The charges against Sendona were also the same as those made against Nogara, the financial visit who put the Vatican on the map financially. Nogara was the brains behind the reorganization of the whole financial structure of the Vatican in 1929. He succeeded in moving the Vatican fortunes from millions to billions, as with a B, before he retired in 1958. However, he was investigated on the charges that he was a Mason and belonged to a secret Masonic society and was secretly conspiring against the Vatican. The same old story trotted out against Sindona and also written large and modern books dealing with conspiracy. See Yellop, Allen and Bowen for corroboration. Not only was no, uh, Nogara not a Masonic man, nor a conspirator against the Church, he was one of the most loyal, hard-working sons of the Church that Italy ever had produced. Not only was he not out to ruin the Vatican, he helped it on to such financial success that it, was, that it now has become one of the richest organizations on the whole earth. When the investigation was completed by the Vatican loyalists, the taciturn Nogara was completely exonerated of all charges against him, and the record showed that he was completely trustworthy, a loyal son of the Vatican in every respect. Yet these rumors and charges persist in every generation and are still being made today. We believe that the reason we hear, for, uh, we hear of, quote, secret Masonic conspiracies, unquote, is to keep the idea of a mock conspiracy before the people to keep them from seeing the real thing. These writers lack one thing in their writings on conspiracy, and that is an in-depth exegesis of Revelation 17 and 18. They focus attention on the Masons to draw away attention from the Vatican, and to create sympathy for the Pope and papacy, 
who are then considered victims of the conspiracy rather than the brains behind it, as I already stated a little bit earlier by reading this. Is there a comment you want to do before I go into point two, Wolf? Well, it's just this is another example. They always control both sides of a debate, both sides of, a, of, a, of an issue. The, the, the Jesuits have done that, done this through all their history, and their, their I mean, it's their, their biggest uh, mode of operation is, is, is controlling both sides of an issue. Yeah, and, and, and another, another wonderful example maybe would be that they always blame the Jews while everybody knows that we are now living in the time of the Gentiles, according to the Bible. And also, uh, the, I, I, this is on my mind because I, I know a fellow that she's about 12 years older than me, so that puts him in his 80s. And, you know, I, I, as time has gone on, I, 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 have, hold it, I have learned to hold my tongue, uh, you know, in the, in the difference between uh, the group, the listeners that are listening to Hour of the Truth is, uh, is they, they are aware their eyes are open and their ears are open. But when you're out in the world and you come across, like last night, uh, this fellow is just bent on that it's the, that it, it's the Jews that control the world. In, uh, and it, it, it's, it's interesting because I, I started listening. Where do you start? And what, what and, and I'll say this, and we covered this a couple broadcasts back. You see, the word Jesuit is not in his vocabulary. So, so there's no way that he can put the pieces together when it, it's, the word Jesuit in the history of the Jesuits is no longer there. And this morning when I was talking to Brunswick, uh, Canada, the fellow I was talking to, when he was he, in, in grammar school, in elementary school, he was taught the Reformation and the Inquisition. Now, this is really, this is a real important fact, especially because we're going to go into this, it's called the insider theory. It's, it's, it's so important to stop and see what they have done. Like, what's the difference between the brother in Brunswick, Canada, and Walt Stickel? Walt Stickel was raised in a Lutheran church. I received no history on the Reformation and none about the Inquisition. Why is this important? This is the simplicity of this. So when you, you know, the people that are listening, we have to learn how to be, I don't know if it's the right word to be tactful, is you, you have to be able to, you have to be able to paint a picture. But the word inquisition, do you realize, do you realize how, if, when you can, when we see this, we see where we're at. The organization that was behind the Inquisition, the papacy, the leader, Jesuit Pope Francis, is going to speak on the 23rd of September to a joint session of Congress. The leader and the, and the, a leopard, you know, doesn't change its, I mean, it's like, the Vatican is like a leopard. They don't change their spots. The Vatican is still the same as it was when the Inquisition was, was at, at full, full blow, full blown. Nothing has changed. Only the thing, now listen to this, the only thing that has changed as they have taken the word Inquisition and the Counter-Reformation out of our vocabulary, out of our minds. There's no way to, 
there's no way that the Pope could come over here and speak on the 23rd of September if the American people understood who was coming. Because it's a lack of, it's a lack of knowledge. It's just purely a lack of simple, just by taking the Inquisition out of the vocabulary. I, I got to insert this here right now, too, because when I was driving truck, I had a friend that lived in Pasco, Washington. And I was reading Fox's Book of Martyrs. And, you know, this was reading like some kind of Star Wars to me. Because I had never heard it. So I say to my friend Bob, I said, I, I told you about the Inquisition. And he said, well, that never happened. Well, I didn't have enough knowledge or enough, I wasn't that well read. I didn't know that much about it. So it was, it was about a month and a half when I came through Pasco again. And he brought it, he went, I, I had said enough though. He went to the library, got a book, some books. He said, Walt, you were right about the Inquisition. Can you imagine the history that we're witnessing right now as a child of God? We have, we have the man of sin, the son of perdition, the biblical, historical, and prophetic Antichrist. Because, you see, only the people in America, when America was one 1% Catholic, and they couldn't hold office, 99%. This country, the revolution, the American revolution, started from the top down. But the revolution of the American people was the Bible. From the ground up. And they had, in talking to my brother in Canada this morning, they had to suddenly change and start introducing and taking the, the, the deity out of Christ and changing, make small changes with all these different Bibles. They had to. And it was been real, it's been done real slow. So, so we shouldn't, the, the people that are on this call, we, should, we shouldn't be af afraid. We should be thankful. And be blessed that we see that God has revealed this to us. That we're not, we're not ignorant anymore. That God has opened our eyes and give us a jolt. The reason I bring this up because this was, this man, I didn't, I, this man hung up on me last night, okay? Because I, you know, he was trying to tell me that the Federal Reserve was, was the Jews. The Jews run the Federal Reserve. You know, but we're going to go over this. So good, in the next page here, we're going to cover this, this very same subject, subject that what I want to put across here. So go ahead and, and, and continue on the insider theory. Okay. The second theory that we see written large in contemporary works is the insider theory. That is, that a certain group of financiers are at work to control the world. Gary Allen, of course, postulates his idea, as do others like William Bowen. Allen states, quote, In the Bolshevik Revolution, we have some of the world's richest and most powerful men financing a movement which claims <coughs> its very existence is based upon the concepts of stripping off their wealth like men like Rothschilds, Rockefellers, Schiffs, Warburgs, Morgans and Harrimans and Milners. But obviously these men have no fear of international communism. It is only to assume that if they finance it and do not fear it, it must be because they control it. Remember that for 150 years it has been standard operating procedure of the Rothschilds and their allies to control both sides of every conflict. Well, I would like to insert here a little bit, uh, a little comment if that's all right with you, Walt. Sure. Uh, first of all, we have to consider that the Bolshevik Revolution uh, over there in the USSR at that time was completely financed by Wall Street bankers 
like the Rothschilds, Rockefeller, Schiffs, Warburgs, Morgan, Harriman and Milners, but that all these bankers are controlled via papal knighthoods, like most and for all, the Knights of Malta, which is a Roman Catholic knighthood, and by that is in the hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church, and by that it is controlled by the Pope, or better said, by the Black Pope. Yeah? These are just the front men. And when, then you look a little bit later into the USSR and you look at Stalin. Stalin was Jesuitical educated at Tiflis in Georgia, over there, and the other, uh, the state next to Russia. So that had nothing to do with Jews and that had nothing to do with Rothschilds. The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Ships, the Warburgs, the Morgans, the Harrimans and the Milners, they are all exactly the same thing as our politicians that we have today. They are just actors. And to understand that, I have to go back to Rulers of Evil, even that's in a place that I haven't read yet, it is in one later chapter, where it is stated that Tapasorsi did the research in the uh, Encyclopedia Judaica, so it's a, it's a Jewish encyclopedia, where the states, it states that the Rothschilds are nothing else than the uh, guardians of the Vatican treasure. And of course the guardians of the Vatican treasure have the ability to use that treasure for their goals. But those aren't their goals, those are the goals of the one who owns the treasure, and that's the Vatican. They will only use the Jews to achieve their goals. And that is something I think is very important to understand, and I couldn't leave this comment out after reading this little paragraph here. Because there are a lot of things probably written in this uh, Insider Theory article here uh, that do not contain the whole truth, because maybe at that time he didn't even do the, the right research to unveil it all. Nevertheless, it is quite interesting to read but it is also interesting to point out the mistakes. Like I also do when I do the uh, uh, reading from Rulers of Evil, I also point a few mistakes out there, so um, that's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that when you know the real history to apply that to what you're reading. But anyway, we are probably going even to that what I've just said in the next page, so I'm going to continue reading now for a moment before we go on a break. It certainly is easy to direct attention towards the Rothschilds because of their great wealth and also because they are Jews. What Alan fails to see is that every accusation that can be made against the Rothschilds and their allies can also be made against the Vatican with much more weight. The Rothschilds' wealth, although immense, is not in the same league with the Vatican's. The tentacles of the Rothschilds do not, each, uh, do not reach into every government on earth with anything approaching the same degree as the Vatican's. The longevity of the alleged conspiracy of the Rothschilds, according to Alan himself, goes back a mere 150 years. Again, nothing in comparison to the papacy whose global ambitions and intrigues go back more than a thousand years. The below is a quote out of the book Rulers of Evil by Tapa page 160 and 161. Quote, in September 1769, Prince William appointed Meyer Amschel Rothschild of nearby Frankfurt to transact some of the, his financial affairs in the capacity of Crown Agent. Aware that the Rothschilds are an important Jewish family, I looked them up in the Encyclopedia Judaica and discovered that they bear the title Guardians of the Vatican Treasury. The Vatican Treasury, of course, holds the imperial wealth of Rome. Imperial wealth grows in proportion to its victories in war as the Jesuits' empowerment Regimini Militantis Ecclesiae implies. The church at war is more necessary than the church at peace. According to H. Russell Robinson's illustrated armor of Imperial Rome, Caesarian soldiers protected themselves in battle with shields painted red. Since the soldiery is the state's most valuable resource, the Council of Trent admitted this in referring to the Jesuits at uh, to all other religious orders, it is easy to understand why the Red Shield was identified with the very life of the Church, hence the appropriateness of the name Rothschild, which is just German for Red Shield. Reading an excerpt, excerpt of Rulers of Evil from Tapa Saucy from the pages 160 and 161, which I already went a little bit 
and before because I was fearing that it was not in here. But okay. You, 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 can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'd like to make a little comment here. Yeah, please you see, do. When you when you come can you when you come to a, a, when you're stating facts, see, there's no debate with a fact. And um, so this is another example of postmodern thinking. In other words, like last night when I was when I was sharing, trying to share some information, I couldn't insert the facts. You see, in other words, because if a fact is missing, if a fact is missing, like if if the Jesuits are not in their vocabulary, you see, they are making decisions on. They're not making decisions on their facts. They're using. Uh, it's, it, 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 uh, assumptions, and and you you, you see, uh, uh, you know, in other words, you, the encyclopedia, you, uh, in, in, in Eutanica, discovered that they bear the title Guardians of the Vatican Treasury. See, in other words, you cannot deny, you know, the bankers, the bankers. Are bankers, you know. And one other thing I, I tried to insert in, when I was in, in this uh, uh, discussion is, you see, all the leaders, all the leaders go to Rome. Uh, the Prime Minister of Israel, he's went, he's been to Rome. And uh, if you can take the President of Brazil, and you can do a Google search. And he's been to Rome. Uh, the Prime Minister of Germany, she's been to Rome. Canada, the Queen of England. Great Britain. Yeah, all of them. The Queen of England. Every single president since uh, 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 of the United States since uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower has made a trip to, the, to Rome. And uh, it's more prevalent today, especially after 1984, and it became official when Ronald Red Reagan was sworn in on the in front of the obelisk. It's more prevalent today, but see, these are facts. These are facts. This is one reason why uh, the Hegmans, uh, Alex Jones, uh, uh, these talk shows would never have Walt Stickle on their broadcast. Uh, they're not afraid of my. They're not afraid of my. Of me, they're afraid of the history that I tell them. You see, when you bring history, when you talk history, just straight facts. See, you know, it cannot be overemphasized more. When you come, when you come, to, and we stated this yesterday, that we pounded this for 45 minutes yesterday in a broadcast, and I'm going to mention it again today. I'm going to state a fact. And the fact is, in 1976, the Roman Catholics, because of seven, not, in 1776, because of the Declaration of Independence, the Roman Catholics received civil and religious power. See, that's a fact. That's not Walt Stickle or debate. That's history. You see, and these alternative, uh, alternative. Uh, 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 news media will not. Well, they they don't want to talk because it, it uncovers their agenda. In other words, especially people that have written books. People that have written books now, when they when they when they understand some of these facts, see if you if you have two and two, you it's four. See, that's a fact. But if you only have two. And you have four. Well, you can you can figure that you can figure out it is it has to be two. You see, and they don't because it makes them feel very uncomfortable. When you understand what omitting facts does to history, it should make the hair rise on the back of your neck. And that's what this little group, people that come that. That, that I fellowship with, they're interested in some just some history. They're not interested in Walt Stickle's agenda. 
But once you understand history and you go, you under, you understand these facts, now you can go to the present. And now you can understand Fox News. Now you can understand our foreign policy and all the wars the last hundred years. By omitting these facts and leaving Rome, Rome out of history. See? I mean, by just eliminating one fact. Because everybody in America, your neighbors, everybody in this is, is common knowledge now that Roman Catholicism is Christianity. <laughs> Prior to 1776, the 99% that lived here, they did not they did not look at the Roman Catholic Church as Christians. They were tyrants. You know, and so it's kind of uncomfortable now when you start when you really look at true history sometimes it gets a little you know you, you in other words see the difference between what we're doing here is we're di we're dividing between reality and fantasy see when you don't have the facts you can be in fantasy land that's why we got Disneyland and the magic kingdom people are living in the magic kingdom you know, the, the Magic Kingdom, is not, there's nothing magic about the Pope coming over here on the 23rd of September. That's history repeating itself. It's what is happening. So anyway, I got a little bit off, but this is a very important, this is a very important part of, of because insider theory, in other words, is to, and, and the biggest one, the, the one is to put the blame on the Jews. And it, it's just not, I, 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 it's just not true. You're, you're when, when people, see, I, see, the reason why uh, he hung up on me is I couldn't accept a lie. He doesn't have any facts. He wasn't presenting any facts except their names. Just opinion, you know. That's the problem most of the time when you talk to people like these who don't do the research. They are just telling you their opinion that is based on the false learning against learning teaching they have been raised up with all their lives. Yes. These people have been living a lie without even knowing it. So that's the problem. Then at the end of their life or somewhere in their life, somebody like you comes or I come and tell them everything you have learned up to, new, uh, up to now is a lie. Imagine that. It, it and I have, a, I have a, I have a very, I have a very interesting quote that I want to read here, and I uh, think you will think that is very appropriate, Walt, because you know that already. I read it to you. It's coming from page four, from the book "Behold a Pale Horse" from Bill Cooper. And that quote, you should really, really embrace it, get it into your mind, understand what is said here. Quote: One basic truth can be used as a foundation for a mountain of lies. And if we dig down deep enough in the mountain of lies and bring out that truth to set it on top of the mountain of lies, the entire mountain of lies will crumble under the weight of that one truth. And there is nothing more devastating to a structure of lies than the revelation of the truth upon which the structure of lies was built, because the shock waves of the revelation of the truth reverberate and continue to reverberate throughout the earth for generations to follow, awakening even those people who had no desire to be awakened to the truth. End quote. This comes from Dilema Duveras, and you can find that on page 4, and Behold a Pale Horse, by Milton William Cooper. And, and, and I, I, yeah. I, I want to remember, it takes one fact. Now, the one fact now, if America knew the American people knew this fact, that prior to 1776, that Roman Catholics could not hold, could, could not hold civil power and didn't have religious rights, because they knew it was a state. They had a leader, and his lead, the leader was the papacy. All it would take is that one fact. You know, listen, I, 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 uh, I was probably about um, 
I didn't know this until maybe 10 years ago, and I didn't know it very well, see. But this is just this one fact, and you put that on top of the, of the pile, will dis- disperse all the rest of the lies. That's how thorough the, Satan has been and how subtle the Jesuitical uh, ac- academics have captured the minds of the world. It's not only in the United States, you know. But anyway, that's what I had to say. I, I think that was a, a good, appropriate uh, saying for what we were trying to put across. Yeah, and you also have to understand that when you are talking about the Roman Catholic Church, their whole system, the complete system of the Roman Catholic Church is based on a lie. And it started with their false interpretation of Matthew 16, verse 18, which reads, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What did Jesus mean, upon this rock I will build my church? Did he mean Peter? Really? The person? No, absolutely not. What did Jesus mean? Well, you have to go for that a little bit back into Matthew and read Matthew uh, 16, verse 15. He says unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What is the rock that Jesus was referring to? Not the person of Peter, but the faith and the belief that Peter had that Jesus was the Christ. And that was not told to him by a man. That could only have come by a revelation of the Father to him. And it is because he believed in the Father, he believed in God, that's why he got this revelation. And that is what Jesus meant. So this is the first lie that Rome is built upon so-called the first Pope, Peter. And the next lie are things like... um, the donation of Constantine, which today in every Catholic publication you can check out, is exposed as being a forgery. And you have also the pseudo Isidorian decretals, the same thing. So this whole system is built upon lies and lies and lies, another one word of truth. But Satan, of course, is the mastermind to mix the holy with the profane and to mix the truth with the error. And, you know, a lie told a thousand times is much more believable than the truth told once, especially if the lie is so attractive as they do that. And I want to make another point, because, Walt, you pointed out that the people are so betrayed and... and, 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 uh, You're absolutely right, but why are they so betrayed? Because the Jesuits, with their learning against learning, and for the people who do not know what that means, learning against learning means the learning of the scripture against the learning and the teachings of man. And with learning against learning, the Jesuits introduced a system that they take out the scripture as the basis of teaching and education and put in the teachings of Uh, of man instead. That's learning against learning. So, because the people are from birth, from the cradle, where they are growing up in, born into a system of lies, they have no chance to understand the truth, except for when the Holy Spirit comes up to them. God chooses his people God shows us everyone, and God gives everyone the right intention. The problem is that a lot of people don't see that, because God, 
the Bible, religion has been taken so much out of their lives. That's why they only see business. That's why they only see the Hollywood movies. That's why they only see the Jewish bankers. That's why they see all that stuff and they don't see the religion behind it. Because when you ask the people, uh, is the Vatican powerful? Most people say, oh, the Pope is a poor man and the Vatican has no money. You know, the, uh, those little, uh, the, those poor Christians over there, we should help them. You know? Where it is the richest institution in the world. It's got all the money. It's got all what you are having in debt. He's got all the goods. But it is not taught today anymore. And that's why people are away from a religious life today. They discuss this here and there with the little knowledge that they have. But the people are not religious anymore. And that is one of the points the Jesuits wanted to, uh, the Jesuits wanted to do. Take God out of the daily lives of the people. And they succeeded with that. And instead of God, they placed the television in there. And there's a very interesting quote that I can't bring up right now because I don't have it here in front of me, but that was made from Anton LaVey um, and his devil's notebook that he wrote. Anton LaVey was the founder of the Church of Satan. And um, he did a statement in his book, um, what I just mentioned, I don't even know the name anymore, uh, The Devil's Notebook. Uh, he did mention there what the television really is. And when you understand that, you see why the people today have, most people, I accept the ones that are listening to this broadcast here right now, because otherwise they wouldn't be here, but most people don't have any affiliation with Jesus Christ anymore, or with religion anyway. It's because it's taken out of their life from the beginning that they have started to live. But... Um, and I'm, I'm still looking for this uh, you know and if you put one fact quote. yeah if you put one fact on top of the pile of romanism in the vatican that christ is the king it destroys and the pope is just a mere man it's the biggest fraud on the earth absolutely it's right out in front of us and there's one fact that destroys it all, and that is Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the light. That destroys it all. They never put Christ first. You would, the difference between a child of God is Christ is in, is. We go directly to Christ. We don't need a priest. We don't need a Roman Catholic priest. And what they've done with all the seminaries and Bible colleges that they've infiltrated, they've made priests out of all of these pastors. Yeah, and the Roman Catholic Church is even worse, because if you don't even have uh, a priest as a mediator between you and God, then they place Mary there. Yes, there's only one mediator. You have to pray to Mary to get to Jesus who brings you to God, according to Roman Catholic, uh, Roman Catholic Catechism. Right? First, Tim First Timothy 2.5 For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Amen. There's no place in here where the Pope's in there. Nope. <laughs> the, the, the little man with the fish hat and the red shoes is not mentioned. <laughs> no, and I finally found my uh, my quote I wanted to read to you from Anton LaVey from The Devil's Notebook. Because you have to understand, when taking away one religion from the people, you have to give them something else. So they took God away, and what did they give you? Listen. Television is the major mainstream infiltration for the new satanic religion. The TV set, or satanic family altar, has grown more elaborate since the early 50s, from the tiny fuzzy screen to huge entertainment centers covering entire walls with several TV monitors. What started as an innocent respite from everyday life has become in itself a replacement for real life for millions, a major religion of the masses. That is the religion today. And when you study how television works, and you know that you are entertained, 
understand the word entertained, enter, to come in, tain, to hold in a state of possession, and meant, to keep that position, you are possessed. Religiously, you are possessed. Uh, possessed by demons or watching television, but anyway, and you will let all that information flow in there, and you take it all as God-given. It's not God-given, it's devil's given. Got a comment here, Walt, or shall I continue reading now? Well, well briefly, briefly, they, what they did in the 50s when the TV came out is, is, is the TV replaced the, the pulpit. That's the new pulpit. TV. The new family satanic altar. Yeah, yes. Exactly. Uh, it, re it, it replaced the pulpit. In other words, where, you know, it, it no, no longer was the pulpit, uh, you know, it was the TV who, who took, o took over and, and, and had the authority versus the pulpit. A replacement religion, Walt. Yeah, that's a replacement. that's yeah. what television is. Working with, of course, Studio Ratiorum, invented by the Jesuits, and the television is about their masterpiece. Yeah, yes. that's, that's about it. Yes. <clears throat> okay, we're in the middle of the... Yeah, you want me quote. to continue reading? Yes. Yes, the, 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 on page 43. Yeah, I know where we are. Okay. <laughs> I, should, I should have known better. You're German. I, you should have. <laughs> okay, go ahead. The appointment of Rothschild gave the Black Papacy absolute financial privacy and secrecy. Who would ever search a family of Orthodox Jews for the key to the wealth of the Roman Catholic Church? I believe this appointment explains why the House of Rothschild is famous for helping nations to go to war. It's fascinating that, um, as Meyer Rothschild's sons grew into the family business, the firm took the title Meyer, Amschel, Rothschild und Söhne, which gives us the notaricon M for Meyer, A for Amschel, R for Rothschild, S for Söhne, which means sons. M-A-R-S. Isn't Mars the Roman god of war? whose heavenly manifestation is, quote-unquote, the red planet, there is powerful Kabbalah here, and there is hardly an acre of inhabitable earth that hasn't been affected by it in some way. International finance and banking are not primarily Jewish. Many of the most powerful banking interests in the world are run by Gentiles. One of the most powerful forces in international banking is the Knights of Malta, a Roman Catholic military order controlled by the Jesuit Superior General. Sadly, even a certain segment of the alternative media helps to propagate the lie that the Jews run international banking. Interestingly, one of the titles of Rothschild banking dynasty is Guardians of the Vatican Treasure. The Jews, as a people, have been used for centuries as a scapegoat by these international banksters and their secret societies, such as the Jesuit-controlled Knights of Malta. To label the Jews as running banking, Hollywood, etc., is to throw out the proverbial red herring designed to throw us off the scent of the real controllers. End quote. Got a got an, uh, comment here, or I'll just continue? No, just continue. Okay. Again, the idea of operating on both sides of every major conflict with which Alan charges the Rothschilds can be seen in the history of the Vatican power politics with far greater documentation to support it. It can even be seen right now in Central America at this very moment, speaking of 1985, keep in mind. The Vatican is on both sides in El Salvador and Nicaragua and the intrigue of the Jesuits on both sides of the conflict is causing such an uproar that the Pope traveled there to try to defuse the embarrassing situation. This completes uh, point number two of the conspiracy of misdirection. Is there a comment do you want to do, Walt, before I go into point three, secular humanism? No, except I think this is a, a good 
a good part. Uh, in other words, I wish I'd have stopped last night and read this little quote from Tucker Saucy. I think I, I'd have been more effective. <laughs> but, but in other words, it's so, it's so evident. Uh, but to uh, some people, you can read whatever you want. They still do not want to believe you because yes. they just can't believe it, because they won't believe it, because they said, no, I have been taught all my life something else. All my life. You are going to tell me that all my life was a lie up to now? I that's don't right. believe you. And that's how they dismiss even facts well, he, presented. And our people will say, I've researched this. I've researched this. Well, they don't want to admit that they were running down a rabbit trail that was going nowhere. Yeah, I know. See, you know, I mean, it's, in, it's, in, it's in, it, I'll, I'll tell you something. It's embarrassing for myself. I mean, in other words, years ago, I used to lean a little bit on the Jews myself, okay? Yeah, everybody does but, when he starts with this research because you don't, yes, I mean, you don't start your research on the top. You start at the bottom, and of course you have wrong yes. interpretations and, of that. And, and again, to really fully understand the revolution, the real revolution here starts from the ground up, and it starts from the Bible. And people can read the Bible, and they can read the Bible, but yeah. they don't believe the Bible. What did Wycliffe say? The Bible is the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. That is the ground root revolution. Yes. And there's not, you know, you're not going to turn anything around, you know, unless it would start with a ground root revolution of the Bible, and that's what the Bible caused in 1611. You're falling a little away, Walt, with the sound. Something wrong? Oh, I'm, 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 am I all right now? The wind's blowing here. Yeah, that's Good. a little bit better now. Okay, yeah, yeah, so, and you probably hear those guineas, so I'm going to mute my mic, so you can go ahead. That's no problem. I love the guineas over there. <laughs> yeah, the guineas is from the Oregon coast. Yeah, did, did you feed them today? Yes, yes, but they, they got one song. They only got one song, and, that's what, and they're playing their song. So, anyway, this is real live radio. Absolutely. Okay, then I'm going to continue reading in uh, point three, secular humanism on the conspiracy of misdirection. The third idea of the conspiracy that faces America is, quote, unquote, secular humanism. William Bowen, in his book, Globalism, America's Demise, spends much time and effort trying to pin America's troubles on the secular humanists. This has become a popular theme with other conservative writers as well. We would be the last to downplay the effect that secular humanism has had on America. But we do not think that secular humanism is the global conspiracy that confronts the world. In fact, we believe that the flurry over secular humanism at the present time is another case of misdirection. The real conspiracy is much more closely knit and has much clearer goals. The drift of America from a protestant moorings allows the religious men to take over. We get tired of listening to those who speak of America's Judeo-Christian ethic. America was founded upon historic Bible Protestantism. Anyone who has studied early American history knows that her people were made up of the persecuted Protestants of Europe who fled here for a refuge and built the greatest country the world has ever seen. It was built solidly on English Puritanism, Scottish Presbyterianism, Scots-Irish Presbyterianism, German Pietism, and Dutch Calvinism. As for Jews and Roman Catholics, they were almost unheard of in the early days of America, and they certainly had little or no influence outside Rhode Island and Maryland. Why do we never hear of this in any of the writings which conservatives write today? You would think that American liberties came from the Jews and Roman Catholics. America is going down because the Protestant Puritan ethic upon which she was founded is being replaced not by a secular humanism, but by a degenerate false religion, which will not mention the past, but will praise the Roman Antichrist. This is the crux of America's trouble. God judges idolatry, whether you are 
uh, whether our half-baked modern Protestant Christian writers realize it or not. America is going down not from secular humanism, nor a false pietism, but from a love affair with idolatry and false religion. It is indeed very strange that comment, we are... Comment. Okay. Yeah, I just in that last paragraph, you have to let that is there's a lot of meat in there. It starts with you know, as for Jews and Roman Catholics, they were almost unheard of in the early days of America. Twenty five thousand out of two and a half million. Yeah. In other words, and that is what's missing in 2015. Not only were they less than one percent. But the 99% did not consider them, the Roman Catholicism, Christians. I mean, this paragraph, you, would, you know, America is going down because the Protestant Puritan ethic upon which she was founded is being replaced not by secular humanism, but by degenerate false religion, which will not mention the past but will praise the Roman Antichrist. That is what's happening on the 23rd of September. Because, I mean, people... Because of the futurist teaching. <coughs> Sorry. Because... <coughs> We're going to have to send somebody to Brussels there. <laughs> but... but but th this is a futurist teaching of a future antichrist that took well that took the eyes of the protestants off of the real enemy uh, over generation yes. generation and generation you know how things go when i mean Papa Sauci made a very good example uh when he mentioned about uh, how many schools or how many universities in the United States of America required a history course in 1914, how many universities required a history course in 1939 and again in 1964, and at last in 1996, somewhere about the time that he wrote the book. From generation to generation, you get a degeneration of, uh, degenerating of knowledge because people have other uh, sources of knowledge. In the time that America was Protestant, in the time of the colonies, history was told within the family from generation to generation. So what my grandfather told my father, my father told me, I told my children, and their children told their children. The source was always the same, and that's why the teaching was originated. But then, of course, you had, with the coming of the um, industrial age in the 1800s, you had newspapers, magazines, and I don't know what all, and they took over. They were now the source of the so-called knowledge of the people. They took, they took over the cornerstone. And the problem is that this source of knowledge was Jesuit-controlled. They control all the media. They invented all the media. And therefore, I can only advise you to go and read this book, Rulers of Evil, where Tapa Sons explicitly says how the Jesuits have introduced the studio ratiorum and the learning against learning. And those are the sources that people have today for their so-called truth, and that's why they don't have an understanding, because they don't even come to that idea to compare what is taught in the world with the Word of God, with the Bible, first of all. Second of all, when they have the idea, it is not even sure that they turn to the right Bible, because it is only the King James only the King James that makes sense, that explains itself, and that lays down these points. All the other Bibles take away the divinity of Christ. All the other Bibles take away so many verses, even, I, I think, even the whole chapter sometimes of, of some, uh, some of these. And they turn the words around. In, in, in the NIV, for one part, the KGV speaks about God, the NIV speaks about He. He can be everyone. No, it's God that is mentioned there. So, even when the people turn to the Bibles, they are often misled because they read wrong Bibles. And then it all doesn't make any sense anymore. That's the big problem. 
and it, it and the uh, in other words the cornerstone the cornerstone that made this country great and the work ethics and what built this country was not the United States government and the founders the the occultic founding of this country what built this country and what we what, and the morality in this country came from the corner from 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 the cornerstone of learning and that was the Bible. People read that Bible. And the reason why the Bible has been taken out of some of these courts, and I, you know, and they have, why they made such a big fuss in doing it, they weren't taking the Ten Commandments out of the Babylonian, Babylonian Roman Catholic Church. They were taking the, the Ten Commandments out of the that were in the King James Bible, they were taking out the Protestants' commandments because they've because they've completely rewritten. Rome has completely rewritten the Ten Commandments and, and left out one and added one and and in it's 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 uh, uh and it's it's nothing that, that we should not, if we're reading our Bible it tells us and. They'll change times and laws, and they and they have they have done it, and you know. So anyway, that that is that's a real meaty paragraph there. I mean that 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 is, you know, it cannot be. And and the more and the more idolatry you have, you're, the more sodomy you're going to have. Just the two read, go together. Just the read two. Romans one. Just read Romans chapter 1. And then know. ask yourself, why was Paul, one of the apostles who went out in the world to teach the gospel to every creature as Jesus commanded, first going to Rome, to the epicenter of evil? Why did he first go there and then read Romans 1 chapter 1? And then, when you're spiritually honest, you will understand what the difference is between the heathen and the God-believing people. It's easy as right. that. Okay. okay. I'm going to continue reading because then we can still complete our uh, point three today. Okay. It is indeed very strange that we hear nothing about the Inquisition today. In reading the quote-unquote stealing of America, we note that the secular humanists are the ones we have to fear. When illustrations are drawn of persecutions in the past, mention is made <coughs> of the early Christians who were thrown to the lions in the Roman era and of Christians who were tortured under communism in Eastern Europe. Various philosophers are named in recent books as the cause of the downfall of Western civilization. In all this plethora of writing about the demise of America because of certain sinister forces, no mention is ever made of the Inquisition, which lasted 500, it says here, well, I'd say at least 600 years, as you got here in the beginning of the song, at the beginning of the, uh, of the broadcast from 1302 to 1805, which lasted at least 500 or 600 years. Is that not passing strange? We hear of the hordes of the French Revolution, but not the massacre of St. Bartholomew's Day, carried out not by atheists, secular humanists, or a totalitarian state, but by those claiming to be religious and belonging to the only true church. Secular humanism is made out to be the unstoppable force, while Romanism flourishes in America as never before. While misguided Protestants stare at, quote-unquote, secular humanism, Romanism controls the White House, the CIA, the FBI, the Congress, and most of the leading posts in the present Reagan administration. Avro Manhattan observes, quote, The existence of such an or organically oriented Catholic body would have been a matter of concern itself, but the fact that it enjoyed the patronage of the most eminent individuals of the U.S. political intelligence and military establishment made their presence one of profound disquiet. The list, although minimal, was impressive. From General Alexander Haig, Secretary of State, since deposed, 
to Mr. Casey, head of the Central Intelligence Agency, from D. Regan uh, of the U.S. Treasury to Mr. Allen of the National Security, from Mrs. Kirkpatrick, UNO, to W. Clark, who replaced Allen in 1982, to W.S. Wilson, the U.S. envoy at the Vatican, and the convert to Catholicism, and many others in less glamorous, but nonetheless very influential posts up and down the administration, unquote. And that goes a little bit together with uh, Chapter 1, Rulers of Evil, Subliminal Rome, which uh, Walt and I are the opinion of, when you read that chapter, you have to read the, the whole book. If you dismiss that chapter based on the facts that he writes there, um, well, then it has no sense to read the rest of the book, of course. You know, you can't throw that out. But he lists of the Almanac of 1992 that all the things affecting the people in America living, the um, the, food, the food, the streets, the taxes, the education, transport, uh, hospitals, uh, clinics, all that stuff is run by a senator who is Roman Catholic and not Protestant. Only this in, 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 part, in, in part one of Book Rules of Evil is very much... Uh, that I want to put to your heart to read it for once, and um, then you probably get hunger for the rest of the book, because I can tell you it gets much better. But this is a very interesting first chapter of Rules of Evil, and this is also why Avril Manhattan states this here in one of his books, as I was just reading. I'm going to continue now. As of this writing, President Reagan has appointed an ambassador to the Vatican, and he has pledged that if re-elected, he would fight for the family in the spirit of Pope John Paul II. So Vatican influence is written in large American politics today. As for fighting the family, the papacy has been the greatest enemy of the family in most Roman Catholic countries in the world, grinding the family under its tyrannical heel all over Central America, South America, Southern Europe, air, and uh, wherever it has been entrenched for centuries. The blackout which has been thrown over the Inquisition and the massacres and persecutions of Romanism apparently is no accident. Conservative writers apparently believe that the United States has nothing to fear from the Vatican, and therefore they seem to have tactically agreed not to mention known historical horrors connected with Rome's global ambitions. Well, you don't bite the hand that feeds you, right? The use of the word Christian today by many of these writers who would alert us from the evils that confront us is obviously an omnibus term. It obviously includes in its meaning, as used today, the unchristian religion of Romanism. So in saving America from the secular humanist conspiracy, we are being herded along with Romanism to do the job. Such writing leaves a lot to be desired as far as biblical Christian is concerned. One has only to look at the nation where Romanism holds absolute sway to see that the Vatican can match anything... <coughs> any secular state has ever produced in the way of suppression and more. Biblical Christians, keep to your Bibles. Do not be misled even by sincere men who have not done their homework in church history, nor apparently in Bible doctrine. And this completes the reading of point three of the Conspiracy of Misdirection in the book The Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy. Do you have some short closing remarks, Walt? Uh, no, except I want to just make, uh, put this out again, make sure that uh, if you've got the book, uh, that you can get, that you correct the error that's in the, on the last page, uh, it'll be on page yeah, 126. Yeah, the last be, sentence and put in John 18, verse 36. Yes, that's, that's, you know, make sure you get that corrected. Okay, that's it we've okay. given, but we've run out of time, so please, Walt. Okay. That's all I have. God okay. Bless. Thank you very much for your contribution today, and I hope everybody enjoyed it. So I probably will see you next time. Until then, God bless you, and bye-bye. But I think we finished right in time there. Oh, that was, that was a very, very interesting 
point three, I have to say. Yes. Uh, really, really a lot of things that were very interesting, and uh, exactly this this discussion um, uh, whether we be led by humanism or we be led by Romanism. Humanism has its origin in humanism. Yes. Romanism yes. is nothing else than humanism. That's what Babylon is all about. It's always self. It's always I, because it comes from Satan. Yes. I will exalt myself above the Most High. Right? Right. Right. It, it, it is. It's a pure form of secularism. I mean, in other words, what other organization claims that they have, uh, I mean, who, who else on the earth claims to be God? You know, I mean, I mean you, you, we live in the 21st century, and you would think that, that that would ring a bell with people. But, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not getting smarter, okay, with all this higher learning and, and the academics and all this college that people have received. We're not getting smarter. You know, people think so, you know. and I guess most people would even disagree with you and start a discussion with you. I am smart. I have been all the way to high school and uh, college, <laughs> and I have studied five years in the university. I am so smart. Yes. And you know, the problem is when you go into a discussion with people like these, you can't win anyway. Mm. You can't win anyway, because... You don't start your discussion on the same ground. The ground that I'm standing on is the Bible, and the ground that he's standing on is built of sand. Yeah, you know, one thing I've learned this last month, I understand, I understand all revolutions are man, all revolutions that man starts from the top down, but there's only one that started from the bottom, and that's the gospel. Well, that's what I what I said. Uh, wasn't that in the last broadcast or the one before? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, and now and I, I said understand. That also, I said that also already a year ago, but yeah. See, but and I understand. understand I understand that that's our heritage. Yeah. That's the true heritage of America. Our true heritage is not Roman Catholicism. It was it was you know adamantly against Catholicism. You know, and that matter of fact, you know, it, it, it's amazing when you see that one fact. It still doesn't, it still hits me between the eyes, the fact that 1776 and 2015, and, you know, prior to 1776, you know, they weren't considered Christians. They weren't, con they weren't allowed to have civil power. You know, they it was right in the... Hold any office. And hold any office. It's, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting question, though. How come that Charles Carroll went in 1774 on a uh, convention, an official convention, over to Canada? That was still before 1776. And he was a Catholic. You know, our, we, we spoke about our, the convention where he, where he went to. It's, it's mentioned in uh, uh, Tom's reading of Global Vatican for the moment. Yes. And uh, it is also mentioned, uh, I think that comes later on, in, in the book Rulers of Evil. And, and we read that already here in the book that uh, the Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy, in another part, we read that with Carol. When you want to go down, it's somewhere in the 90s about Charles Carroll, where he went to um, Bingenen. Uh, what is that? Um, this convention over there in um, in, in Canada. In, in, in Canada. Yeah, Canada. That, that was in Benjamin. Canada. That, that was uh, Charles Carroll. That was John Carroll. No, John no, Charles Carroll. Carroll was a member of the Maryland Convention of 1775. Yeah which adopted the Association of Freemen of Maryland. The association was pledged to an armed resistance to Great Britain. We have already mentioned the Continental Congress appointment of Charles Carroll and his cousin John Carroll as a committee with Samuel Case of Maryland and Benjamin Franklin to visit Canada to secure the alliance of the Canadians in the struggle for independence. The committee was closed, clothed with almost absolute power over military affairs in that country. And, of course, we know Charles Carroll then financed the whole um, uh, 
the Revolutionary War and everything else. But, yeah, he was a flaming patriot. He was given the title First Citizen. And as a First Citizen, this cloaked Jesuit under Catholic guise went to a Continental Congress before even in the United States of America, that was not formed at the time, in the, in the, before even that in the colonies, there was given freedom of religion. How is that possible that he attended in that at that point? That's something you have to ask yourself. Are you talking between 1776 and 1789? No, I'm talking between 1775 or 1774 when this convention was in 1776. In 1776, with the Constitution, they were given freedom of religion. Yeah. How come this Catholic went to that convention in 1775? Because that's an official uh, position that he had there. He gained the reputation be. to be it, it, Maryland's it, first citizen. It, it could be that he was highly involved with the American Revolution. <laughs> You know, I mean, I mean, you know, when you look at the evidence. No, but you don't, you don't understand. I mean, the people of where he comes from, those people, Maryland, okay, that was mostly Catholics, but there were still Protestants at that time. Maryland still had at that moment a Protestant government, right? Yes. So they knew about that. So that means that even the Protestants in that government knew that a Catholic would go to the Continental Congress over there in Canada. Yes. They had to know. So that means that the mayor or whatever at that time from where he lived was a Jesuit. Because a Jesuit will take the color of a Protestant when the hierarchical church advises him to do so. Well, it was, brilliant. it was brilliantly done. You see, the reason, they, and, and the reason why it's, it says in the Catholic Founding Fathers up on the Catholic site that the carols flew under the radar, it was done brilliantly, see, because they were so afraid of a, of, of a ground-level revolution. See, because that happened in 1688 with the Glorious Revolution. Mm -hmm. They were, I mean, in other words, Carol is, Carol is quoted as saying they wanted him to go to France on, a, on, a, on one of the missions. Yeah, and he and he uh, he uh, opted out and said that to anybody but him, he wouldn't go because he didn't want the, he didn't want they were so afraid of a ground root and and the you know revolution. In other words, the people got because see it, it, the American Revolution was not popular. You know, only four percent partake. You know, you know, and a lot of the, of course the the patriots like to. Grab, grab a hold of their muskets and and they and they they uh, want to uh, they want to say it was a, a Christian endeavor. Uh, it was a Catholic endeavor. Is mm. what it was. You know, it was not a it was not a Christian endeavor. You know, I mean the 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 uh, the, 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 gra the real Christians, the Protest the Protestants that were. They didn't gain anything from the from the American Revolution. In fact, <laughs> they lost. They lost. See, you know, yeah. and that's that's what's being swept out, and that's all they had to do. And uh, like, and I was talking to this fellow from from, um, from Canada today. See, <clears throat> I mean, that they're they, they do this slowly. See, mm -hmm. I mean, in other words, here's Wall Stickle. I'm 71 years old. And I and here I and I went to a Lutheran church, and uh, I never got any of this history. I never got any Reformation history. See, I didn't I didn't understand the battle. They never tell you the battle that was going on in the colonies. They never what they omit, and it brings out in this article. He brings this out. You know, is they omit the battle between between paganism. And Christianity, mm -hmm. because see, prior to 1776, and this everybody knows, they didn't they didn't allow the, 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 uh, the celebration of Christmas. That was not allowed. I know there are even pictures on the internet of um, yeah. uh, banners hanging on houses or something like that. Where but, but, but what they did, um, what they did do, 
what they did do to counter this, they started demonizing the Puritans. I mean, you, you, uh, I mean, uh, this same fellow that I was talking to last night, I've heard him say on several occasions, and I just have to just see, you know, those damn Puritans, some damn Puritans. You never, you never, you've never heard them damn Catholics, you damn Catholics. You never hear that. No, of course it's not. It's always the damn Puritans. But, you know. Well, welcome to 2015. Yeah. <laughs> the Puritans, know. the Puritans of today are, are, are the fundamental Christians, uh, Bible-based, 1611 King James Version, Bible-based Christians are the Puritans of today. That's, that's right. We and are, we are in the same situation as the Puritans at that time. And, it's, and, and I'm starting to realize this, and that the people that are listening, that listen to this broadcast, most of them have heard, they, 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 if they come to this broadcast, but, they, but, they, but you, you're going to share it. The reason it is it is what is needed you have to realize that i'm more concerned with the sheep than i am the goats because in other words people need to hear yeah you're all right yeah this sounds like it's fiction fiction is stranger than truth i mean the truth is stranger than fiction you see it, it sounds like and see what people really need is, is is like i need that phone call that i got from from uh uh from uh, canada this morning I mean, my phone doesn't jump off the hook. I mean, it just doesn't jump off the hook. But, you know, we, we need to say to each brothers and sisters that are listening, you know, and, you know, you're all right. You just grab your Bible. You know, you don't, you don't need to listen to a priest. If, you know, you can read. God, praise God, you've been taught how to read. Just read your Bible. And, and, read, and, and read. believe it. And believe every word on the page. You see, and th th this, this, this is, I mean, uh, th 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 this is why they're so bold today. Why, why they can bring over a Jesuit pope to speak to a, to a joint session of Congress because they're so bold because they knew that, that see the the Protest the Counter Reformation has been completely successful. I mean, this. I mean, they have wiped it out of the mice. The average person on the street, uh, they don't, uh, uh, they don't know anything about the Reformation. See, everything that's going on. It's because the they freedom. took religion away, Walt. Like I said already on the broadcast. Yeah. 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 They took yeah. religion completely out of our lives, and then the step they they placed a television set, or an iPhone. An iPhone. Now the phone. Or a, is now or a, the phone. Or a tablet. Or whatever you want to call all this stuff, you know, people don't have religion anymore. People are not growing up today in the belief system of of, of any belief system that there is a God. I mean, we in the West, not. That's different when you. That's different when you go to India, when you go to China, when you go to Japan, and that is certainly a difference when you go to the Muslim countries. They are as religious as can be. I think that even <laughs> from the 1.2 billion Catholics, I don't think that even the half is that fanatic about their belief as it was the Muslims. And that is because all that is taught in the Quran. To kill an infidel, to sleep with children... I, I just yesterday watched a documentary. I sent you um, an email. Uh, no, I, I, I wrote you in Skype the link. Did you see that, Walt? Yes, I did. That uh, documentary. About the Kenzie, about the Kenzie report? <coughs> no, uh, the Kenzie report is another thing. Uh, the uncensored truth on Muhammad and Islam for people from 18 years and older to watch. Mm -hmm. So... I, I, I sent you that, and he made some very interesting points in that uh, documentary. See, see, and another thing that they did real subtly, real subtly, and everybody has heard this, heard this before. Now, there's two things I, I, I learned this growing up, you know, and I mean it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a. Anyway, there's two things you don't want to talk about: hmm. religion and politics. We are so good in education, so everybody runs to their schools because they are so good in education. And that's right. They are good, 
The problem is, if you know the Bible, you know that you wouldn't want to learn anything they teach. <laughs> hmm. Well, isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? So you haven't watched that documentary on Islam then yet? No. Oh, I can really I advise you. I can really advise you to watch that. It is very, very interesting. And in the end, there's uh, almost half an hour Q and A. <clears throat> very interesting to listen to. I can tell you. He does. I, I mean, the problem is it is it is just an audio with a few pictures. Yeah. It's not a, a video where you hear him talk and where you see him talking and everything, like a lecture. Okay. Uh huh. You understand. But the way that he talks and the way that he explains these things. Uh, Welcome I, to talk show. Uh, uh, Please I, enter the call ID followed by the pound key. Keep, keep, keep talking. I, 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 I'd say that uh, he speaks exactly in the kind like Kent Hovind does. Yeah, you know, that's a problem when I, when I. But okay, but even let them. I mean, for, for anybody who has never known Christ. Even let him read the NIV, for God's sake, okay? He maybe still yeah. gets anything out oh, yeah. that will put him on the right way. And when then doing research and everything, he maybe finds out that the NIV is not the fit Bible for him. So, But before the people ever have to touch a Bible, that is the point where you have to get them, you know? It's like it is yes. written in this book, Rulers of Evil, in the preface, you know, when the guy says, and, and leave this book on a low shelf in, uh, on your bookshelf for inquisitive children. The point is the book is there and everybody can see it, but nobody stands up and grabs it. Opens no. it and opens it and reads it. That's the problem. The Bible is there. Everything that we are living has to do with God. And I'm daily confronted with Him. Whether I'm a believer or I'm not a believer, I'm daily confronted with Him. Whether I accept that, or I reject that. That's where, that's again another question. But God is everywhere in our daily lives. It's only what's the trigger that you see it, you know? What triggers you? What triggers you? What triggers you? Everybody is different. Well, Something that triggers one person doesn't trigger another person. So everybody has in that way, I think, his moment of awakening. Some earlier, some later. I don't know. I can only hope that it comes to revival when times are getting harder now and people are remembering at that moment their roots and say, okay, when we have trouble, turn to the, wor turn to the Word of God. That's a little my hope that I have because the plan of the, uh, of the Jesuits is, of course, that they, will, that, they, that they will forsake the Bible because the Bible has not, uh, not brought any solution yet for them but brought them in the trouble they are in right now. I mean, when you think of the coming financial crash and economic crash and probably war uh, everywhere, you know? I hope that then people will not go the way the Jesuits foretold and be unsatisfied with the Bible, but just turn to it. And when somebody already has a basic knowledge and he hasn't read the NIV, uh, he hasn't read the KGV, but you have, then you can discuss things with him and you can tell him, okay, now, look, your Bible says that, my Bible says that. How comes? Well, what's, what's, like what's, what's the difference? And when you then bring the people to, okay, where do these words originate from? Who has written them in the first place? Then you go to the KGV stating this has Hebrew in the Old and Greek in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And your Bible has Latin. But Latin hasn't known the Bible until Jesus Christ came. So which is more trustable? In well, you know, t t t to can you hear me? Yeah. It's, it's, um, <clears throat> it's like this. It's, 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 uh, uh, the deception we're talking about is, in other words, it, it, it encompasses it encompasses the whole world and it encompasses mankind and once you start seeing this once you start seeing this in other words what the bible does for me now it just it just confirms everything i'm seeing a god has opened my eyes and then i can go to scripture now 
and, and see exactly what's happening. Like all these false teachers, you know, and false prophets, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, uh, 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 in other words, we, we, we have to stay, we have to stay to the words on the page, and know, in other words, and, and we can't be adding anything or taking away. We just got to be, we got to keep it, just like that verse, um, uh, John eighteen thirty six. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's so evident of what Christ is saying there. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's it's so evident that, in other words, we don't need you know the, the teaching that God is in everyone. That is New Age teaching that everybody yes. is his own God. Yes, yes, that's absolutely right. You know. So the sentence ended with New Age teaching, where it should have uh, ended, as you stated now, with uh, John eighteen thirty six. Yes, yeah. yes. I mean, you know, in, you know, I mean, I just, I, I just, as soon as I read it. I mean, it, I was reading. It, I was reading it to Dave. You know, after we had done that, and in because in in see, in other words, we never got ready to. When we finished that broadcast, we stopped about a paragraph. And I, anyways, long story short, I when I when I when I read that paragraph to Dave, man, it didn't sound right. Boom, and and and, and it didn't. And, and and Dave picked up on it right away too. See. Mm. You know, no, I didn't. Age. I didn't pick up on it. My, I have to be honestly. Well, because well, because you hadn't read it in, in its entirety. You just you you you. you I, I mean, it's the last. It's the last sentence in the book. So. Ah, yeah, no, that that you skipped over. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, well, yes, so I yeah. couldn't know that. No, that's right. You you'd have picked up on it. <clears throat> we would we would have both picked up on it right away. I think you know. It, yeah, but we, we ended have, we ended a few we ended, we, before the yeah, end yeah, of the yeah. book. Really, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we ended there, and, and anyway, that's that's that's. Uh, that's yeah. why the sentence was never familiar to me when you read it to me. Now I understand. Yeah. Because yeah. I haven't read it before in the book. <laughs> I cannot yeah. know a text that I haven't read yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that would make sense why I didn't pick on it also. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean that's, I mean that's uh, very important because it's the last sentence in the book. <laughs> yeah, I have never read that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's close this up. Yeah, yeah. Well, and two, I started it. I don't know, I, but I, I started the first two chapters. I'm, I, I, I want to. Uh, I'm kind of glad you're taking a little break on the on, um, on Rulers of Evil because because I'm thinking about putting that book together, and printing it. Hmm. Pr- printing that book. You know. You know what's strange? That's already about a fortnight that I don't receive my comments anymore as I received them before. You know, from MV Papas? Yeah. No YouTube comments anymore. I uploaded yesterday <clears throat> the last part of Chapter 12 with my confession after that, you know, mm-hmm. and I haven't even got one comment on that yet. Well, I'll tell you what, what I think it is is the people that have been listening to us, I mean, I got an email today, praise God that you and your likes are out there for God to lead us so that we can be fed. You are only a little handful. It is so sad. I have no idea why I have been given to see and hear, and I am only a baby in Christ. Walt, I'm so grateful. You have no idea. I, I get to love God, our Father, and His only begotten Son, and His Spirit is of great comfort. Um, you know, I, I, I see. I, I uh, see how she says. She says this. Uh, uh, in other words, uh, you know, I, 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 I have no idea why I have been giving to see and hear. See, in other words. I mean, once once you once you see this, and then talking to talking to this man up in Canada this morning, it was really a uplift because you know I, I need I needed to you, you need you need a I mean, we're, we're, you know the, the thing of it is it, 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 the, the thing of it is out there there's just not a lot of people that, that, I mean it, it's uh, it's uh, like it's, it, uh, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Yeah. And the people that, that the people that are listening to us see they need they need comfort. I mean they need they need a little bit. They they they're, they're coming here for some fellowship. In other words, to hear like-minded people. See, 
Now, they've already opened their ears. See, and, and they've opened their ears and got eyes to see, and they're seeing the very same thing. And, and it's like last night. It's like last night when Ken called me. I was just sitting here when he called me in the evening. It was late. It was later on. It was, and I was just getting ready to fix myself some supper. But I realized how twisted his head is. Mm-hmm. In, in other words, <clears throat> you know, I mean, I mean, it just sometimes it just wow, wow. And, 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 and be so dogmatically that they know exactly, they think they know exactly what's going on. You know, and, 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 and it's one thing the Pope, what the visit to the, the Pope's visit, you know, because to give you an example, when I was talking to him last night, I mean, I, he, I said something I shouldn't have. He, 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 taught, he, brought, uh, uh, he said something about global warming. I mean, he believes in global warming, see. <laughs> well, he, he's going to love the Pope. Is he Christian or what? Well, yeah, yeah. He, or is he Catholic? He a, no, he was raised. He was raised by two. He's hundred percent German, mm-hmm. and his parents were raised. He was raised in in New York uh-huh. in a German in a in a German community. Matter of fact, they used to, when the war broke out, they had to change their signs of their church. You know, because there was a lot of prejudice over here. You know, crazy craziness over here, you know. Yeah. And, uh, so so, so you, you, you asked me, well, he was raised by two, by a very, two strong God-fearing people, and, and, and he was headstrong, and he went out into the world. He joined the military when he was 17. He joined the military in 1947. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, Ken is a, is a guy that's, he's interesting, because he he has a uh, he's been helping he's been helping uh, 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 pe- uh, he's got several families that he's helping over in the in the Philippines and he's been he's 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 been to Israel uh, in other words and he he has been over on the Palestinian side he went through the checkpoint he he knows just how evil it is and how evil he's, he's he, 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 see, he, 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 he's really not, I, I would call him anti-Jewish, but he realizes how uh, apostate the, and how wicked that little, little, uh, that little country over there of Israel is. Because what they're, what they're doing to the Palestinians, Palestinians is they, they, they just locked them. They, it's a big concentration camp. So Palestinians. The Palestinians, I mean, all it is is a big concentration camp. Yeah, all it is. It is. It, it's, uh, that's all. I mean, and, and, and it's and and what the, what they're doing to those people is 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 unhumane. It's just. But it's, don't don't forget, Israel itself is also in uh, a concentration camp in itself. Not only yes, yes, not, that's not true. Not only Palestine, <clears throat> but also Israel, because Israel will be misused by the coming of the false antichrist, right? And they are very happy that they have them all there. That's that. That is right. That is right. I mean, uh, don't forget that know. there are a lot of rightful Jews in that country. Also, not so many, but there are. Yeah. I mean, to me, I like to discuss the Jew, uh, the Jew point, just because a Jew to me is a lost person because he doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, and um, it takes a lot to convert a Jew, I think, to Christianity. <laughs> oh. uh, also, in that regard, you should watch that video that I sent you there over Islam. There also that uh, is this talk about that. I think in the Q and A at the end, it's um, it's uh-huh. very interesting, you know. Mm. But the difference between Islam and Christianity is Islam conquers with a sword and converts people in their belief by the sword. And Christianity does it by love and the word. That's the difference. I can tell you, I thought I knew something about Islam, but after seeing that documentary, that really impressed me yesterday. It's uh, mm-hmm. really something I can advise you to watch. And by the way, he cites the KGV. Yeah? <clears throat> he c- cites the King James, what? Or the King James Bible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Still, my problem I have with Walter Feit, who uses now the NKGB. I don't get it. Yeah. He made the lecture Battle of the Bibles on that subject. He knows how corrupt the NKGB is. 
What is his excuse then for using it? It reads better? <laughs> you know, uh, it, it, huh? you know, I, I was talking with uh, Mike Leckham yesterday. Hmm. We were talking about Ken Hovind. Ken Hovind got out of prison. And, uh, that's good news. Yeah, that's it's good news. So. Uh, but you, but you, you know something, brother. I'm not saying this to I'm not saying this to uh, point fingers. But you, you, I, 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 well, I can say this without saying anything against against. Um, but, but I, as a as a lay person, as as just a child of God. How can anybody read their Bible, read their Bible, read their Bible, and not say anything about Rome? And there's lots of them. There's lots of people out there. I mean, you can't pick on one person. I mean, that's. I mean, I have a. I have a fellow that I used to study under. Let's a little, take for example the Jews. Do you know that they are forbidden to read the um, the Gospel of uh, the Gospel? I say the Book of Daniel. <coughs> Uh-uh. Yeah. Jews are not allowed to read the book of Daniel. D Daniel will show them their mistake. Daniel was showing them when the Messiah comes. That's right. Yeah, That's what I say. This Daniel shows them th their mistake. No, he doesn't. I mean, well, uh, okay, he, this question how you he, see he, it. But well, I mean, well, well, because well, they, Daniel, Daniel told told when he was coming, and he's come and gone. Yeah, yeah, but if you don't read that, well, then you don't know that. And then, of course, you reject the New Testament. I mean, there were next to, to Daniel also other prophets appointed to Jesus Christ, but never uh, with the same timetable, you know, when you read Daniel 9, the 70 weeks prophecy. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was not another, as far as I know, to know at least, there was not another prophet who made the same timetable pro uh, uh, projection of when Jesus Christ would come. But that, therefore you had Daniel 9, with first the prayer, and then at the end, the revelation from the angel. Seventy weeks are determined on your people. And when you don't know that, then you probably don't know when Christ comes. So, you have to excuse a lot of Jews, of course, because of that. On the other hand, you don't have to, because they are all lost in tradition. You know... Uh and tradition is uh, that can, they can read in their Bibles for themselves is wrong. You know the creation of the world. You know, th the first six days and the seventh. You know, was a a big day in God's creation. I mean, you know, I mean the first week. You know, but boy, the coming of of Christ is going to have to be the biggest day in history of man. You know, because you know. The, the, which, what we see going on, and what makes me uh, stronger in my faith, is the more that you understand the world system and how the world system opposes Christ, it, it strengthens my faith. In other words, it, everything fits. Every, every, everything fits. In other words, in other words, the, like talking to talking to Kent last night, you know. Uh, he he asked me. He said, "Have you read the Bible in its entirety, from page from you know?" No, I haven't. I haven't read uh, uh, the Bible like the the Old Testament in its entirety. No, I haven't. But the New Testament, I have, you know. But the the, the point that I want to you know is 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 how how people can talk and 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 you know. You know, like, and we talked about it today. I mean, how you can blame the Jews <laughs> and leave out the papacy? I, I, I mean, the, the, yes, the, the Jews. Look what happened to the Jews in 70 A.D. And who did it? It was the Romans. You know, and who's in charge today? You know, especially, especially that book you're reading, I mean, Tupper Saucy's book. I'm telling you, that book is is Peyton. I mean, it's such a vivid picture. I mean, I mean, I mean to to not be able to see Rome in Washington D.C. is 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 just a 
your your lack of knowledge. But it, I mean, if you're taught anything about Romanism, I mean, I mean, Washington D.C. stands out like a sore thumb, you know, you know, and <laughs> you know, and the fact that here I am, seventy one years old. But, what, but there again, it was interesting talking to that fellow up in Canada. He was seventy six years old, but mm-hmm. he was taught. See, he was he because he was still. I mean, the, the British Commonwealth, I mean, the Brunswick, but he was taught growing up. He was taught growing up uh, the Reformation history, see. And, 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 and see, 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 like, uh, when you're talking to somebody like Ken who wants to blame it, everything on the Jews, he, he forgets the Reformation. He, he omits the Inquisition. It's like it, like it happened, you know, years ago, but it, it doesn't exist anymore. It's like it's went away. But again, again, when I even talking to Ken last night and getting up this morning and thinking about it, I mean, it gives me more faith. It's it's like this. It's like this, York. We're either in deep. We're we're either in deep, deep air, or we're right on the money. Who was I talking to the other day? How can you, once you know this, some of the facts of history in Rome, how could you ever? get this out of your head to believe that it's the Jews that control the world. Because they don't read Luke 21, 24. And Jesus said, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's, that's uh, what is it, Mark what? Luke 21, verse 24. Does it get any clearer than that? Does it? Get, yeah, good question. Because before that, it is stated a little bit like the same, like in Matthew 24. But people don't put the connection there, you know. It happened in 70 AD, and since then the Gentiles took over. Right. And the gospel went into all the world, all the pagan nations. I mean, you have to understand that. We have a pagan background, you and I, because we are not Jewish by race. We have a pagan background since generations from where we come from. Our forefathers were maybe even uh, Roman soldiers. You never know. Well, you and I, we come from the same pot because you have a German heritage and I have a German heritage. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So uh, we have always been in a Gentile nation. We have never been risen with the word of God. Israel was such a small little piece that little piece was godly and all the rest was ungodly for the 4,000 years until Christ came there was only this little spot of light in the Middle East Israel and then the Jewish nation after that and then bang gone no nation anymore, no nothing, scattered into the world how must that feel when you have that heritage <clears throat> to think about, and, and then they think that some I think people that must think be, that, that must be very hard on you, don't you? Don't you think that those people could even probably grow up to be a little bitter on the whole world? Uh, when you think about that, when you have this Jewish background, when you can really say, "My people always walk with God." Okay, they don't do any more today. I don't discuss that, but my people walk with God. And now look at this world. Why can't the Jews see that the Antichrist is there? when they see what they are living in today, and, and they are still living in all the nations all over the world, they can form yeah. themselves pictures. I'm speaking about the racial Jews, eh? not the religious Jews. And religious Jews is bullshit. Anybody can be that. Anybody can go and say, I convert. But therefore, well, like, even but therefore even you don't have the blood of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? <coughs> Genetics, you know, like uh, the, the Mormons... I mean, there, there, there's no way they, they can tell. They can, they can. You can only, t- you can only go back about 500 years. You, you can't, you know, you, you, you know. It's a good chance you and I, I don't. You can't have. go further back, but the question is, what does it cost you? <laughs> what kind of archives, archives do you have to look into? Uh, mm-hmm. Forget about that. The only archives that I, own, uh, for once in the world, would see, uh, like to see, are the archives of the Vatican. Right. Because there's a much, much truth buried there. That would be interesting to see. Walt, I have to cut the conversation off now because it's been two and a half hours almost. Yep. 
Yeah, I, I got to go. And I got to and I got to go to the bathroom also. So that's a good point to quit the call. Okay. Okay. Well, God bless. And we'll Thanks for a great show. And let me know if you want to have the recording for the show if you need that to no, work on. No. Okay? No. It's, it's 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 up there in its entirety. Okay. It's up there. It, it, it recorded for an hour and 49 minutes instead of an hour and a half. Oh, so, so 20 minutes extra. Yeah, okay. But, but yeah, 20 still, minutes. But it, still it, 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 it won't hurt anything. We can always, oh. you know. No, it you know. won't. But for the uh, for the video that I will make, I will uh, at least cut the last few minutes off because it was just barbarous. Okay. Something interesting. Okay. Thank you very much, Wolf. And okay. uh, um, I hope to see you soon. Okay, okay. And if you have time, really, watch that Islam documentary. It's uh, really interesting. Okay, okay. Okay. Bye for now. I love you, brother. Bye-bye. Love you, too. Bye for now.